What's up YouTube, it's Todd Horst here with Tasty Tracker, and today I wanted to go over how I set up Tastyworks. I use the web platform. Uh, the only time I use the desktop platform is if I want to uh, set up an after hours uh, trade, uh, which you can do in Tastyworks, but you have to use the desktop as far as I'm aware. Um, so yeah, let's go over the screen here. I don't like these gray gutters. I'm on a widescreen monitor, so those are just a waste of space for me. I don't like uh, this section over here. Uh, and then you'll notice if you have a lot of columns, you have to scroll between the two pages. So it's inconvenient. Uh, you get a smaller chart. Um, and then you have all of these tabs over here. Of course, that's not the end of the world, but I don't use um, the tabs like follow and, and journal and tasty trade. So um, if I can just get rid of those, then that, that suits me. So, so I, I wrote an extension uh, to Chrome and a bookmarklet. Uh, for those not aware, uh, that's just a bookmark that runs some JavaScript code. It's open source, and so I will leave the link in the description, but it's called jQuery Tastyworks Mod. Um, and you can scroll down here, click on this link, and open that up in a new tab. And then we can drag this link to the toolbar. So if I just drag it up here. Now I can come back to Tastyworks and click on this and it will automatically make it full screen. Um, the problem with that is every time you refresh, you have to click that button if you want to. So to fix that, I wrote a Chrome extension, which you can come into the tags section, hit this download zip button, and then go into your extensions in Chrome enable developer mode and then load unpacked um, and then it will uh, ask you to browse to the folder where you extracted that zip file once that's installed and enabled then you'll see this little black dot now when i reload the page i don't need to click the bookmarklet it will automatically do that for me if you don't want it to get rid of all of these uh, uh, icons actually i think i'll be updating it to not remove all of those and just remove the gray in the side panel but um but you can always modify the code yourself it's not very complicated at all okay so now uh at this point uh, i think the next thing is just what columns do i have set up and i'll first state that i don't really use the trade price and the mark uh very frequently those are used uh, more when I'm trading stocks. So I'll, I'll come in here and say, okay, how much equity do I have tied up? What did I buy it for? 286. And it's currently up $10 and it's at 296. So that's really the only time I use um, these two columns is when I'm looking at the stocks view. Um, the main sections I'm using right here go to days till earnings and then this. Uh, gain here in the game percentage. One thing that's a, a bit annoying with Tastyworks is the column headers here don't necessarily match up what uh, they are in the configuration. So let's go ahead and do that. I click on the cog over here, then I can see which columns I am actually using and then which ones I'm not using. Um, so trade price net is this column. Um, I don't think I can move this window. Nope. Uh, mark is the next one. Net. Gain net gain change percentage total net last price underlie uh next chain net change price underlie net change percentage uh, days until earnings extrinsic and theta so you just want to pause your screen here and set those columns up Okay, so like I said, I don't really use theta um, at all. Extrinsic value is just good to see how much is left. Uh, we want to, uh, you know, this will go down as time passes. Um, but but again, I don't really look at this too much if I'm honest. Uh, days till earnings is definitely important to me to know when I can expect a lot of the premium to come out with the IV crush. Um, this would actually be a little bit better if market was open, but what you'll see here is the last uh, price the stock traded at. So Microsoft right now traded last at 224. The net change is for the day. So it'll say it's down 1% on the day or up 
1% uh, on the day. And then the net, uh, I'm sorry, that's over here. And then it changed per percentage. This is how many dollars. So down $10, up $10. Then we get to this column. This is where uh, th these three columns are for the options. Um, today, how much did those options change in value, up or down? You can see we lost 50 cents here and we gained $90 here. And then the total of um, how much we lost or gained today. Then these two columns are overall. So the Microsoft's position overall has made about 40% and I'm up $136 on that position. Um, now, uh, an example here though is Amazon where I have two positions on currently. So the top line that we see out here is the sum of both those positions. If we drill down into it, even though I'm at 24% overall, the one position is 36 and the other one is at 13. So, um, so yeah, you can, you can see the overall as well as the individual level, especially if these are grouped. Again, if you don't know how to group those, this is what it will look like by default. You just select the two legs, hit group position. It doesn't matter which group type these are just labels so um, a lot of times the second one there's a bug where it'll come up empty and so I just click whatever because um, I don't really care what the label is I just care that they're grouped um, and then you can see the uh, percentage gain on that set of positions uh, that set of strikes okay um, yeah so I think that's basically it it's not overly complicated like I said I think I'll be updating the bookmarklet and the extension to have all the buttons here um, in case people are interested in those. Um, I guess the maybe one more thing here would be this button up here. We'll expand the chart and then put the stats over here. Um, I don't use this view at all. I like this view because I can see uh, how much total extrinsic value there is and what my net liquidity is versus cash all in one view. Um, uh, I guess one last thing would be the uh, percentage of profit. You can sort by that. Um, it will g give you your account over view here, 61% chance of profit. Um, this is just an easy way to identify what positions are not doing as hot as other ones. So down here we can see I'm closer to 50-50. Um, and then up here I'm closer to uh, you know, 60, 70%, which is what I enter them in at originally. So we would expect something to be, you know, 57 and on up. These are basically uh, where they were when I entered them or better. And then down here is where it's gone against me a little bit. Um, so if you don't know where that's generated, you can actually see that at the time of entry. So let's say I go to Amazon and I just select Let's go to the 40% like I might typically do. Um, so that's a $5 wide, 194 credit, looks nice. I can come up in here and see the percentage profit uh, is 59. And then the pop 50 is um, if you were to close at 50% profit, your odds increase that you're going to be successful. Um, of course, none of this really means anything. They're just using um, standard deviations basically to see how likely the stock is to go out. So you're getting the same picture by putting the percentage in the money as this column and um, and, and selecting 40. Uh, if you didn't know how to do that, you literally just click on the column. Another sort of bad thing about Tastyworks is they only allow one configurable column here. I can't click on any of these other columns except for percentage in the money. Um, and that's the one I always, or 99.9% .9 of the time, leave it on that. I will occasionally look at the volume, open interest, um, but honestly, that doesn't really, uh, I'm looking for premium more than I'm looking for open interest. The open interest will flow in if it's a good ticker, like Amazon. Uh, there will be people there that will, uh, the liquidity, liquidity is there if it's a, a lesser known stock. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is these aren't 100% reliable. Uh, sometimes it might just be slow when you're entering. Um, but if you consistently see that nobody is interested, then, then obviously that's a problem. You could also look at the implied volatility, um, which changes depending on the strike. 
uh, and then delta or mid price. Uh, if I'm pricing out like an iron butterfly, um, having the the price associated with each one is good information. So that way you know uh, how wide to make your wings. Um, but yeah, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm on percentage in the money. So I think that's really it. If I left out anything here that you're curious about how I have set up or what it means, let me know. Um, but it is fairly basic, especially when you remove half the crap that's not needed. All right. Thanks.